Hello, everyone. Welcome to another fabulous Masterclass Wednesday here on Behance.net slash Adobe Live. And that's exactly where you'll need to be if you want to take part in the chat in our community. You can watch on YouTube, but of course, you can't take part in the chat. And that's no fun at all. So come across to Behance.net slash Adobe Live and join in. And you can see and ask questions of our amazing guest, who is once again the incredible Klaus Schwinski. How are you doing, Klaus? It's great to see you. Thank you. I'm 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 doing mighty fine. Congratulations to a two 0 win England against Germany, to uh, exemplary goals. So I have I have nothing to bring up, and now we can all be friends again. I think <laughs> we can. <laughs> get over that bit that's all good <laughs> just 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 next tackle brexit and we're good oh man oh, i wish we could i really do wish we could that would be fantastic but let's anyway about, yeah let's talk about something more simple and and <laughs> yes <laughs> less contentious the um well just before we get started klaus uh with your amazing topic today which of course is lighting up stories illustration with your good self so we're looking forward to that another continuation of your amazing uh, concept work here so that's really good but let's say hello first of all to some of the people who are joining us so we've got Kirsty in good morning Kirsty and Gareth and Sean we've got Stuart I think I saw just there we did and we've got Jackie in so all of the usual suspects in here apologies if I haven't said hello to you. oh Sandrine's there as well Oliver super good so great to see you don't forget this is where you put your questions in the chat and of course, all of the usual bants that you add on uh, here in the UK, which is great. And just quickly, hi, you are from Pakistan. Hello. So there we are. And no more talk of football. Let's uh, let's be done with that for now. Right, Klaus, take it away, my friend. Tell us what you'll be doing today and then let's ease into that. I will, I will, I will do everything. I will sketch live. I will draw. Um, I will show pretty pictures. I will draw ugly and fast pictures. Um, I will, um, yeah, talk about storytelling with light. Um, yep. I will give a short introduction to some lighting tips, some some techniques, some uh, foundations. Uh, but I'm not gonna go into too technical stuff because I wanna. We wanna do storytelling. We wanna get excited yes. about great stories and pretty pictures. And I am, if you know me, I'm a storyboard artist. I worked on Horizon Forbidden West. I'm currently on Avatar Frontiers uh, of Pandora. Um, and so I, with me, it's all about storytelling in a fast and effective way. Um, so if you, if you want a deep painting analysis uh, with like little nuances, uh, I'm sure there are amazing other guests also on, um, on Adobe Live. In the past, I've seen them, I, I marvel at them, uh, but I'm the guy who's like quick solutions, effective stuff, yeah. um, how to have a lot of fun with it in a quick way. And you can join me doing this. So yes. Uh, I brought a couple samples. Uh, a lot of them are not work samples because I cannot show them. They're all under NDA, non-disclosure agreement. Yeah. Uh, but I sometimes do fan art. I watch a movie like 1917, like really intense movie. Um, anything that is gritty and has like guys with guns, um, gritty guys with guns. That's my uh, my safe space, basically. I've never fired a real gun in my life, um, but it looks exciting on screen. And, and in visual storytelling. Um, so it's, it's, it's really good to use that um, here and there. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, my main message today is uh, use light in stories. I'm a, I'm a big fan of line art. Everybody knows that, how much I, how much I love it. Um, but um, lighting can change the complete way how you perceive a scene, even though it has the same lines in there or if it has the same... Uh, elements in there. What we're trying to do is tell a story. And the story is told from A to B to C. It's it's um, it's a sequence, right? So we want to yeah. guide the uh, the eye of the beholder through our pictures and take them by the hand and go like, oh, look at this big thing. And then there's a tiny thing and there's another thing in the background. And that's how we want to yeah. do it. So what we don't want to do is overwhelm um, the uh, the observer. Yes. And in order to do this, uh, we can use multiple techniques. And one of the, the things that I, always, that I always mention is uh, differentiation, which is the most, uh, the biggest concept in, in art and in visual storytelling. And it, 
it just follows what humanity does. Like we tell things apart. What is not like the other things? For example, if we are um, if we are cavemen, right? And we look over the savanna and we look over the tall grass, right? Everything is the same except this one thing, right? And then you have a, a giant a mammoth or something come at you. And so automatically you look here because it is different. It, 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 it pops out over the horizon. You have a line and then you have something popping out and that's where your attention goes. Or you have something that is always the same, but it's not the same in one aspect, in, in, in one part of it. So all the, our attention is drawn here just by the simple rule of differentiation. Yeah, and you can disruption of regularity. Yes, and you can you can yeah. differentiate in in a bazillion forms. Now the attention we don't know where to look anymore because everything is really the same. But for example, if we go in, for example, use the blur tool um, from from Photoshop and use that handsomely. Takes a little bit change too long. Focus. Right taste here. Yeah. All of a sudden, we change focus quite literally uh, yeah. on the right-hand side of the of the tall grass that we have here. Um, so this is a great technique of doing this. But I want to speak today all about values and try to neglect a little bit the compositional aspects and not talk about like differentiations like uh, edge quality, uh, blurred blurredness, color. Not doing color at all today. Just looking at black and white stuff. There are a few color pieces that I have for you here. Um, but the cool thing is, and one of the main um, pieces of encouragement I have for everybody is if you master values, you have already done half the work for colors because colors is just like the sprinkling on top of it. Um, value, light and dark is really what, um, what drives differentiation. Yes. So, um, yes. yes. So starting with a neutral gray there, which is good, I think. Uh, yes, and I uh, just just to talk about uh, some some words here. So there's something uh, called a color scale, a value scale, um, yep. and that that value scale goes from solid black to perfect white. And now I have my gradient not 100 percent, so I'm doing this again. Boom! And here we have solid black, and here we have solid white, and that's a nice gradient. Um, see, and and that is really sweet. So um, this indeed is a very, very boring picture. If we make this bigger and make this, put this into this graphic system that I have here, it would be a really boring picture. There's not really much going on. Why? Because there's no contrast. There are no edges. There is nothing to differentiate. Like this part is really close to this. It's really close to this. And it's an evolution here of, of darkness. So not really exciting. Um, I can actually, I could have done it. In, in that way and just just throw in this let me let me do this slightly differently so we'd actually do that with this uh, with this graphic system because this box here is a graphic system and and this graphic system this 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 box is um, is always changes, uh, always changing. These graphic systems, these areas we draw into, like for example, this could be my battlefield, literally. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying here, that every graphic system, every picture is a battlefield. And uh, the elements on that, in that graphic system are battling, are fighting for your attention. And um, sometimes they're winners in one way and sometimes they are winners uh, the other way. For example, if I take a relatively neutral gray and, uh, and, uh, and, and throw this in here, it's automatic attention because there's something different. We just have this gradient yeah. and then we have this hard edged round circular element uh, and it has a different value. So it's a, it's a pretty dark gray, right? Uh, except if I copy paste this and put this into the dark area and then we see, oh no, this is a pretty light gray, right? And now we notice that the more this battlefield changes, the more um, our attention changes. So if I change the background and, and take down the value here, all of a sudden, one of them becomes much more apparent. I didn't change the element. I changed yeah. the battlefield. Yeah. Um, and uh, the darker I make this, the more uh, one of those two pops out, even though they are the same color. And uh, there's something called the, the Bartleson effect. So for the uh, smarty pants around you. Um, this is what this looks like. 
um, in, in the essence, we have a white next to a gray. This is all the same white, but it really pops out here in the black. And the same is, is done in reverse. If you reverse this on a value system, uh, if we're talking about a value system, then um, this, this dark here, you see this is not actually black, but this here looks pretty black in, in, in the bottom. And uh, yeah, that's the basic message here, that uh, the, 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 if the system changes, your focus changes. Yep. Makes a lot of sense, I think. Absolutely. And uh, uh, the coolest thing of this is like, this is a value scale. We talked about this. So uh, we have a contrast here again this, from this gray. Let me move this against other gray. So the contra contrast is not as strong. Like it almost disappears here. If you squint your eye a little bit here, it pops out here, it disappears and here it pops out again. And the strongest contrast we can have is quite obviously white against black. So this is what we would do. I would, I would go in there, I'm locking the, the, the layers here. Now I'm throwing in a clear white and now I have something really popping out. And now it's really disappearing. So if yeah. we use the scale and contrast in some way, we have the most impact. So there's a value quality, but there is also yeah. something called value quantity. For example, in this system here, it's pretty even black and white. But if I actually make this a little bit smaller, this field, we see this has turned now into a low key scene. Not low key the. Uh, the <laughs> Not low key the god, but uh, low key as in L O W K E Y. <laughs> Exactly. So this is this is yeah. more high key. This is more lighter, and this is more darker scene. And we have to make a. A decision, a concept. Art is always making con conscious decisions, and we have to make a decision: Do we pay low key or high key? And where do we put our attention? And where do we put our focus? And and this has to do with the quantity uh, and the quality. The quantity here, dominant quantity is black, um, but the focus is white. And we do it in reverse, the other way around too. If we want to do it this way in white, we would put a little black dot here we wouldn't put the black dot here because then the attention doesn't uh doesn't yeah. uh, punch as much and a great example of of this is already here you can see it in this fan art i did for 1917 um i'm i'm doing pretty well in the industry especially in games and it's a it's a storyboarder you don't want to um claim credit for something that you haven't worked on. So I always have to say like, I didn't work on this. It's really important for me to, to do this because some other times I might show something and yes, I actually worked on that stuff. Um, so 1917 didn't work on the movie. It's fantastic, blew me away um, the, the production wise and production way they did, in this, they did this in one shot. Um, but we wanna talk about values here and we see that this entire system is pretty gray. This is all ever gray and we have a white spot here. Yes. Yeah. The focus goes here immediately, but I didn't do the gradient, right? I didn't. I didn't do a full. Um, I didn't do the white, and it put it into a into a gradient. Um, yeah. Let's see if I can click on this. This. Now that's that's something personally. I do do that quite often when I'm trying to establish a focal uh, area. Mm -hmm. I use a gradient. Is that something you ever do? I do know some other people that do that as well. Do you? Is that something you ever do, or is it? I, 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 do, I do all the nasty tricks in the book if, yeah. if, if I can. And there, there's always more techniques than one. And the only thing I can do here is show a snippet into how my thinking oh, of course. when, when I'm yes. putting this. Um, so here I'm putting uh, a, really, a really dark spot um, against a really light spot. So let's exaggerate this a little bit here. And then, then you can see it even, and it's even stronger. But this would be a little bit too harsh. Um, we always have to have to take it back a little bit because we are doing illustration in, in this. We are not doing um, conceptual art like it's paint put in a museum like this one here would be conceptual art put into a museum and it just speaks to you on a very abstract way. But the best paintings can be summed up in, in this abstract way. And I've, I've done this tonal breakdown for a drawing I did in a workshop uh, a year ago. So, so um, let, me, let me open up this here real quick. And because it's Photoshop, I can open up, I can open up a movie and, and have this play out here. 
So if I look at this at, at this at this at this painting, I notice that there's a, a giant black area, a dominant value of darkness, and then there's a white spot, and then there's a whole lot of gray. Yeah. And if I summarize this, this is what's going to happen. Hey, that is a nice demo there, Klaus. I like it. Thank you. Um, yeah, I have I have this uh, and many more things on my on my Instagram. Great idea to plug it. It's Storyboard Klaus uh, at Storyboard Klaus uh, on Instagram. Uh, I can actually. Gareth Hanks has got your back. He's just said he saw this animated on your LinkedIn as well. So uh, yes, hey Gareth, good good seeing you here. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, so this is the way uh, we, we can summarize this. And you can see the, the the lightest spot, the brightest spot is actually right in this in this in this dark one, right? I didn't take the, the white spot and put it out here. It wouldn't be good A because it's at on the corner of the image and we don't want that. We always want to get the attention to go inside the picture more and more to the middle and funnel our attention there. And if I do an outlier. It's actually an outlying skeleton here. Uh, I can yeah. do this, but I should do it with restraint and not go too black here. So if I, if I actually went into this thing and, um, oopsie, I have to put this video layer up top here and do this, and then I can actually paint in there. So, um, so if I went in here and put put really a black skeleton here or something, or uh, made a um, create a a really white spot here because there's some some golden elements, uh, golden trinkets are left here by the dead person. That would be blinking too much, and then this would be fighting against yeah. ourselves and and battling for attention, just as I said. And this might still win because it's white against black, and this is white against gray. So the context is always super important. Um, and just creating the most focus we, we can in any, in any way, shape or form. Any trick in the book we can use to, to create the focus. And here it goes from this connection, you can see this here, it goes from, the, from this uh, torch outside, oopsie. It, um, let's delete this layer here. So we can nicely watch this. Um, the, the attention is brought from here through the flying bed to the skeleton and then it actually goes back here and is let back up from this gray it's leading you up into this into this spot um, so it's a very very simple illustration and the more simple they are the more iconic they are the more we're able to um to make this happen if we have very complex illustrations with like three characters in a perspective background with stuff happening in the background still it gets more complicated and we yes. might not be as successful, especially if we are a beginner or if we are rushed. I'm, I'm, I'm not a beginner, but I'm rushed often because storyboarding. Um, so You're definitely not a beginner, Klaus. Definitely I, not. I, th I think I don't qualify as a beginner anymore. I don't think you qualify as a beginner. All righty. I think, I think, I think you've, you've moved on from that quite a bit, I think. <laughs> Yeah, so I have, I have another image for you guys before I start sketching in, 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 into, some, into th something new. Um, and so we, we, have, we have talked about um, the, the values now and the value construction. So I've, I've brought this, this old illustration here. Again, you can see uh, a graphic system that is uh, full with element elements. So what are those elements? There's a foreground element that is solid black, just a silhouette. Um, there's a mid ground here that has a lot of detail and has some value changes, but not dramatic ones. And then we have a, a, a background, a, a third plane of existence in the background that is lighter and that actually contains some white elements that I snuck in there. Um, so we have those uh, three uh, stages, so to say, these three planes. And, and this is always good if you do this. You can also revert this. If this was a night scene, you might have the background in black, the middle ground again in, in medium colors, and the foreground be really white because there's a there's a torchlight or something, so it, it, it lights up that uh, that part of the battlefield. Um, but an important um, fact I want to mention is that whenever you draw something, and that is the danger with with um, with with creating um, 
any illustration uh, is whenever you do something, something happens. And you should be aware of what it is that happens. For example, if I have this graphic system and if I add this white here, or if I add this, this black here, focus is created within this graphic system towards this black. If I put gray in there, there's very little attention because it's already a gray background. Um, but yeah. I, could, I could also like make these lines here, basically adding a texture. And now this reads as a darker gray. If you make this smaller, this reads as a darker gray, but not as gray as the black one. You can see it quickly and easily the way I zoom into this image. This might not only be a texture, this might be something that, that has detail. It could be like a can, like a like with a fizzy drink in it, you know, and some details. And there's maybe a, a tube plugged into it. And there's another tube in here. And I don't know, there's some, some lines on it or a, there's a button on it. So I have now detail quality. And that is unfortunately the same as detail quantity. However, um, drawing these, these lines here is really fast. But if I make this smaller and you squint your eyes, you see one black area. And you, you see two gray areas and they're all the same. But one of them, the one with the detail quality takes a whole lot of time. And with the detail quantity, it goes really fast. So, um, so sometimes this is very impressive to, um, to, to spectators who see something and they're not like us. They're not like artists who actually have to draw the thing. We artists see immediately why we are impressed with the picture. So yeah. if, I, if I have a, if I look out the window and, and there are like, like, like bird leaves, uh, sorry, um, leaves are, are floating mm -hmm. through, this, through the sky. There's, there's a street down here. And, uh, and there are a lot of leaves because there's, there's a tree by here and the, the tree is, is flying, has a lot of uh, leaves flying in the wind, okay? So this is, this yeah. is great. So it immediately registers, oh, there's detail. I see a flow in there. This is fantastic. Um, I can even put a shadow in here. There's some translucency in the uh, in the leaves, so they are not as black as the um, as the tree. So automatically, we have a light source established from the right, and there's a bit of a tree here. And we can I can draw the trunk in there, and this automatically looks good. Oh, there's a lot of detail going on. That's so gorgeous. So this takes me 15 seconds to draw. However, yeah. if I do the same scene with cars. And we look down on the street, we can already see how many more lines I need to draw in, a, in order to establish that we are looking at a car. So this takes me a whole lot of time. And now it's a traffic jam, so I can't, um, for example, there, there might be an accident or something like this. So I can't just go and like, oh yeah, let's copy paste this real quick. And I have like a lot of, a lot of details in there and create basically a gray pattern like this. This would be creating a, a gray area in the middle of my picture. So it just boils down to the same thing as, see, as some leaves flying in here. There might be leaves on the ground for some reason. And there's, there's the, the nefarious tree again that has dropped the leaves and the leaves are here on the, yeah. the sidewalk. So if I make this really small, this will read as the same thing. It will read as gray. And uh, that's a big message from today. Please be aware that when you render detail or texture, it will create grayness and it will create a value. It yeah. will create an area that establishes itself as a value in your drawing. And it has nothing to do with what you draw. Could be leaves, could be cars, could be texture on something. I might be going like, yeah, you know, there's a, there's a texture here on the street street is made of wood and it has a different different texture and all of a sudden i have really three very different things created that all one two three all read as grays yeah all right so a couple of things that are in the chat actually one one relates to your earlier picture at the mouth of the cave um i think that's what gareth was asking me who is waving at you by the way say hi um would klaus advise to approach every keyframe in a storyboard like this so the approach you used uh, at the mouth of the cave. And also, and I think you've just answered this really from Sandrine, is there a relationship between planes and grounds and contrast? Planes and grounds and contrast. 
I suppose that to a to a degree would depend on the the, the viewpoint, right? If you're like a worm's eye view, that that changes things completely. And if you're an aerial view, that changes things completely, right? It, it it does from a from a compositional point of view, but not necessarily from a value point of view. Okay. So uh, I'm trying to not talk about lines creating attention today, or uh, or other things like animation, for example, can also create yeah. attention. For example, if I have this, this is a really calm scene, right? So there's not much yeah. not much happening here. Um, so let me see if I can just open this for a, for a smidgen of a second here. And now I'm saying like, you know what? There's a, there's a, there's some golden stuff here, right? So I have this, this little highlight here. Mm -hmm. It does it does a bling because that's a golden skull, okay? And yeah. so I'm doing this, shaking my uh, opacity, putting it back, right? And going like, bling. We have the bling here. And so if I just <laughs> I love that you say bling, <laughs> so good. <laughs> um. So. So you can no longer look at the at the torch because I'm now animating something, and that animation is very very strong. And in 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 making films, you you play with all these elements um, to to create attention on something or away from something because you can sneak stuff in from behind without people knowing. And later when they watch the movie again, they're like, ah, oh, I was I was looking at the blinking thing. So I, I didn't I didn't see the snake attacking from the side here, for example. And uh, later we will, we will look into a uh, into a drawing that I started in my last stream with Tony. That was all about composition. It was this one here with some like mutated humans attacking one guy, one sleazy guy. And we'll look into this, and and maybe we'll have time to uh, to delve into that before we That'd we be wrap great. up the day. Um, and yeah, so um, yes, yeah. we would love to do, I would love to do this in every keyframe. The question is how much time you have that. If it's keyframe, you have some longer times, so you can think about this more and flesh this, this yeah. out more. And there are scenes that are really very relevant on, on the lighting. And then you can explore this. Some scenes are not relevant because it's just daylight, doesn't matter. And it's two people. So then you can create attention with placing detail at the right spot, which is yeah. placing value in the right spot as we just learned. So it really, and I mean, that's the thing because it's not concerned with the technical aspect of keyframes. It really is about set, setting a scene, isn't it? For a particular event. That's more from a filmmaking point of view. What you're actually interested in there is, is the scene. What is, what does the scene look like at this particular time? Yeah, and I have, um, I have this, uh, this grid here too. This is also an interesting example of this and I'm gonna go into drawing really fast. So please bear with me yeah. here. Um, so yeah, we have yeah. this one here. Um, it's like the checkerboard uh, shadow effect, they call it, I think. Um, mm. And it's it, it's really cool because um, you see the checkerboard, it's it's super clear, like this is a white tile, this is a black tile or a dark tile, uh, dark gray tile, and this is a dark gray tile, this is a dark gray tile, but it's in the shadows, it's darker, and this is a dark gray tile. But when you actually look at that uh, in terms of values, you will notice that this value in painting, in realizing this picture and making it happen, this black tile has the same value as this white tile. Do you notice nothing changed? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's here. just how it's relatively positioned. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, from this, the, the yeah. black becomes blacker, the dark tiles become blacker, but um, the white tiles also become darker in the shadow and and, and they, they change a lot. And, and they change so much that now the dark tile is the same value as the white tile. Hmm. So um, that's a great demonstration how basically uh, knowing reality doesn't automatically mean that you can draw reality or paint reality. You have to know about the effects that um, our vision system, how it interprets stuff. And, and, and that's a thing. That, that's actually called the curse. That, that's one of the curses of knowledge that is, right? It's, and I see this a lot when I watch, when I observe people's drawings, is that you can tell at a certain point where they've assumed that something looks a certain way or is a certain way and they stopped actually using the reference they're not or 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 using what is in front of them they suddenly started just thinking oh yeah that's a window so that finishes just there or whatever um yeah um and having having more knowledge makes you more prepared to um to to to, to play with it 
uh, and to bend mm. the rules and just still make it believable. For example, I, it's not my job to render anything photorealistically. I am not no. that. I don't create that kind of keyframes. No. Um, if you look at uh, uh, Andy Park or Dennis Chan, uh, amazing artists working for Marvel and for video games and films, uh, they create keyframes that are photoreal. They they use some three D elements, photo bashing. They can paint like a like gods. Um, and uh, so, so they do that, but they take a week, I take an hour. Um, and there, there's a difference here. For example, in this post-apocalyptic scene, um, the middle ground has a lot of details. So my claim is that the middle ground is actually gray. It's not black and it's not white, it's actually yeah. gray. So I've painted over, before I had this meeting today, I quickly painted over um, this, this area in the middle and, and made it gray. And now if we compare, this shot, uh, these two images um, to, to each other. And if you squint your eye, you will see this is actually the same. If you give this a moment and then squint yeah. your eye, you'll see those are both the same, even Maybe. though um, uh, here in this one and the left one, I have, I've done everything with detail. And in this one, I've done everything with value. Presto. Yeah, there you go. Jackie, so, uh, by the way, is asking, uh, do you consciously think of all these things or is it second nature to you now? And I guess it's a little bit of both, isn't it? But... it, it is a little bit of both. Um, I sometimes, uh, yeah, the thing is I first do stuff intrinsically from the, from the tummy, from the stomach out and go like, go with your guts. Um, and then I, I do, I do, I hold, I stop and I examine and go like, is that actually possible this way? Or is there a smarter way of doing it? Or have I just broken a rule? And mm. it's it's only this uh, this knowledge check at the end before you before you hand in the drawing uh, that um, that 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 differentiates uh, a good artist from a very good artist, or yeah, like 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 this. And because in in the business side of things, you don't have the chance, you don't have the opportunity for hit and miss. As a, as a free artist that just loves drawing, you can do that, you know, churn out 10 paintings and eight of them are great and two are like, ah, not good really, bad day, you know, it doesn't matter, it's perfectly fine. Um, but as a commercial artist, no, all 10 have to be it good. Matters. Yeah. yeah. Because like how many, how many months of the year do you want to be able to pay rent? All of them. Yeah. Um, and if you if you had to have a bad month and your drawings don't turn out well, then you don't have enough money to to uh, to pay, pay the rent. rent. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's the yeah the thing there. So yeah, always thinking about this helps. Um, at first, I did I did all the mistakes, right? I, I always use that disclaimer. I everything done wrong today. What I, what I explain examine that is wrong. I have done that myself, and I have I have an example for you right away if you want to. Um, okay, let's go there. Yeah, let, let's go there. So. Um, but let's let's go somewhere else. So I have a um, a revision I did um, of a friend of mine, hey Isa, um, um, from a yeah from from a project I was on some some time ago, and um, uh, uh, so my friend there is a, she's a three D three D artist, but she also dabbles in in painting and concept. We needed something to to show for that for that for that project, and so she made this little illustration uh, of a. A courtyard, or what do you call this? Um, a little village. Yeah, or a market square, or a town square, something town like that. Square, market square. Yes, exactly. Yeah. A church in the background and stuff. So that that's all nice. Um, the the problem with this for me, however, was when when I was looking at it and dis dis discussing this was, okay, ni nice drawing and nice atmosphere, um, but it it was kind of flat to me. Mm. So wh when I put it to grayscale, and this is also always giving us a new perspective, you should, should always. Uh, flip horizontally your image, and if you paint in color, switch it to grayscale in, in between, so you can still examine whether your value structure is good and whether you're not distracted by color, because color has only a minute impact on where you're looking. Yeah. Value is much stronger, and that's why uh, I'm working with values. Yeah. Um, so we see if we make this small, I will I'll hide this here because this is just distracting. So if you make this a bit smaller, uh, you see like, oh, I, I don't know really, there's not that much to see in here in terms of depth, because if I um, <coughs> don't know if I can actually do this here, I should try this now. Uh, I'm using the stamp, <coughs> excuse me. And now I'm it's gonna okay. go with a filter. 
if you need a minute to grab a, a glug of water, that then because you're doing all the talking all the time. So, you know, it's, it's hard work. It's hard on the throat for, for doing that. It is. I need to get, uh, you need to get better with that. Um, oh, well. So, it's all right. We're all friends here. It's all good. If you need to pause to take a drink of water, you pause to take a drink of water. We're all cool. So we can, we can see this now here. If I use the mosaic yeah. effect on this, um, it's it's pretty rough. Everything is gray. We have we yeah. have most of the part really, this is like grayish, uh, a value of like two maybe. And then we have mm. some value of three in terms of blackness. There's some light value here, some light up here. Uh, it never gets real black, it never gets real white, which is actually good. That is a, a smart move. The painters normally don't need this. You only need a white spot in the eye, maybe to have a reflection there and a black spot for the iris. And, and you can only paint black where there's actually no light going. Yeah, at all. Paint something yeah. where the sun doesn't shine, that's, that's a black spot. Um, yeah. So, um, but so they are rare because most of the time ambient occlusion brings some stuff into even into the shadows so we're yeah yeah so um i had to i had to go in there and i wanted to 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 work to work over this and um let me see um so so um oh tim's just saying a histogram would probably be useful there to look at that that's a very uh, good suggestion i think to actually view a histogram uh for that um view instagram for what uh view, no a histogram so oh. those gray levels. So if we looked at histogram uh, oh. of that, we could, um, which you could pr you could do either by calling up levels. So uh, Control L for the levels, or uh, or actually use the histogram panel. There there is a histogram panel. Okay, it's a it's a window called histogram. Uh, yes, this is the German version. So oh yeah, there's a histogram there. So there you go. Here, here, here we so, go. But yeah. I'm confused a little bit, so I should probably uh is this yeah okay um but let's yeah. let's let's stick with my technique now because i want to show you what, yeah. I, what I did. of course sorry so I, I put it into grayscale and then the first big thing i did was i was like take inspiration from this baby here black foreground make it dark so i i added darkness in the foreground and boom, automatically. Different picture, yeah. We're pushing back um, uh, the foreground. We're separating foreground and background. All of a sudden, we have two planes because while this perspectively and our, from our knowledge base, this has perspective, um, it didn't have value perspective in there. So let's put some value perspective in there and uh, use some, uh, some masking for this. And we also, excuse me, um, so this is the darkness in the foreground. And now we want to wash out the uh, parts of the background. And we do it like this. We have the light coming from exactly the same from the angle that the shadow is cast as well. This shadow should probably be more horizontal. I angled it here. But whenever you uh, look at another picture, like a few months later, you, you discover new things that you would have done differently, right? So there's yeah. no, there are no perfect pictures. They will always, you will always be like, no, today I would draw this differently. Um, and that's perfectly okay. That means you have learned, so that's good. If you if you do, if you want to avoid that, the only way to avoid that is by never ever touching the pencil. And we don't want that, so f that. No. Let's draw. <laughs> let's let's make mistakes and be okay with it. So um, uh, yeah, I've done all these mistakes. I've done, and I will show you in five minutes where I exactly did it the same way. Um, so here we go, um, black and white. Um, then I added. Uh, you see, you see that here now. I, I took down the um, this part here, for example. Uh, this the um, the church. I, I found it important, right? So we wanted to, to make it pop out. We, we were trying to create a focus in composition. So what I did is I, I, I the the church is now hidden within the tree line here. So I took that down. Also, what we see is when we look at the picture again. Can you differentiate the church from the tree line? No, no, no it's the it's same thing. on average, the same value across. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so what I want to do is I want to make the church pop out by giving her a light side and a dark side. Mm. And and I've I've hidden details. I've taken away details because details are not important. 
which really sucks because I love details. I draw them everywhere. Uh, that's my special skill. However, they are not necessary for uh, storytelling. You just have to have enough details. Yeah, sometimes it's it's not what you add. It is what you actually take away is the is the th is the essence of it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And uh, the it's a it's a process, right? So if you draw your picture, don't assume that when you start drawing, it will get perfect. The first lines will be perfect. No, you have to revise. You have to bring in different ideas. You have to put it away for an hour, take it back, look at it, go like the values could be stronger. Does it still yeah. work as a thumbnail picture? And we see now automatically it already works better as a thumbnail picture. But I will I will I'll do this in a in a second. Let's go through this real quick. Just remind me, you've done comics, haven't you? You've done a couple of comics, haven't you? Yeah. And a few comics. Yeah. I've done some G.I. Joe and some Transformers. Uh, yeah, that's right. I, I knew you had, I just couldn't remember which titles you worked on. It's all right. A question popped up in the chat a little while ago. And I was just trying to remember. <laughs> so, but there you go. Fantastic. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm known to have done a, a spotlight wheelie for Transformers, the most of yes. all Transformers characters. Um, yeah. And, um, but yeah, that's. Um, Oh, man. Pardon I me, I, I've about... forgotten. I've got a complete, complete brain block for a moment. <laughs> I would love to talk about comic books. Chat, would you like to talk about comic books at some point, about sequential art, like putting panels next to each other? I'd love to talk I'm about I'm sure them. they would. Yes, like, for hours. <laughs> it's the answer. But this is really, uh, values are really an uh, important part of visual storytelling, also for comic mm. books. But in comic books, they, they, they work a little bit differently sometimes. So I'm putting more stuff in here. And what you see now here, I put some white in there, which is actually not really white. This is, you see that? That is not white. Looks white, isn't super white. Light gray. It's, it's just a super light gray. Uh, so I'm putting that in there. And then I'm like making the town more medieval looking. Those are like little dirt details. And then the birds, the birds. You see that? Boom, here they are, mm. top of yep. the page. So this is basically animation. This is the equivalent of what I do in animation as a storyboard. I, I draw in particle effects, little things that flutter through the air, little, little highlights, little lowlights in other places. Um, and that makes a scene alive and interesting because normally there's something called wind and that blows little particles over, um, um, over the scene. And if you have a, a romantic movie, you always have this scene where the couple walks uh, on, a, on, a, on an autumn evening and the winds are falling through the air while they are walking and and it they land on the ground and that makes it so romantic even though they're just yeah. two people standing there and nothing is happening so it gives us yeah. more uh, more visual sense of it yeah. yes and then and i gareth I, oh sorry i was just gonna say gareth said um uh was wheelie on grimlock was he on Grimlock? No, Grimlock. Um, no, he, he, uh, he later on he popped up with other with other characters in the IDW comic books. Um, ah. Yeah, you have to check it out yourself. And if you, if you, uh, I think Google the there's a Wikipedia entry on a, on Transformers, um, yeah. and that actually has a as a wrapping up. It, it summarizes what's happening in my comic book, and it does it in rhyme. Oh, which, nice. Which is amazing because the character speaks in rhyme. That's the craziness about this character. And in my book, you find out why he does that. And I wrote it together with uh, Simon Furman, who's an Englishman and uh, one of the most famous authors for Transformers. Excellent guy. Oh, cool. Thank you. So, um, yeah, we, we see like I, I streamlined the shadows here a little bit on the fountain. Put, put the birds in. So we got some attention leading us there. And couple more god rays. Uh, then I freed the sign. You see like this, this signage here, signpost. Yeah. Oop, I made it pop out a little bit more. And, and, that's, and that's basically it. And then some more, like I did some translucency here. In the, sorry about this. Uh, it's not here, but it's, it's all good. I did some light overspill. So light is spilling over us here, um, over the foreground. That makes it, gives it more interest. And then I just edit, edit in some details, uh, broke up the uh, the roof here over this shop, open shop uh, booth, and and that's it. And and now wow. we have a completely different 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 picture, and yeah. uh, now we can go. Um, I'll wait for it. I will I will knock this. I'll take these two layers here, and I'm gonna move them all the way up. 
and uh yeah before after yeah, yeah so um, much more this this is not always possible because you as an illustrator are always limited by the uh constraints of the storytelling that is necessary for the scene especially if you work in video games this might be an evening scene so the lighting has to be set up differently in order for it to make sense but often if you're an illustrator you have free reign about a whole lot of things and you can use all these techniques that i've explained today or that i'm alluding to today to make the image pop more yeah absolutely it's good cool. stuff let's look at me making the same mistakes we call it a mistake. <laughs> you know because i told you I, i've done all the things so this is yeah. a warmer 40k cover and yeah. a lot of people know warmer 40,000. and uh this was actually a co cover i did for uh black library press in, yeah. in england a uh, subsidiary of games workshop i believe who produced these miniature games yeah um with the with black black forge and yeah yeah and um yeah. So it's an amazing universe. And I got to play in that a little bit. So this was a cover for a book called 15 Hours. Um, it's, a, it's a really cool, cool book about uh, an Imperial, Imperial Guard soldiers, these year Imperial Guard, uh, fighting against orcs on an on a almost destroyed planet. And uh, it was called 15 Hours because that's your, that's your life expectancy on the battlefield there. Wow. Can like, you just make that a bit bigger so that people who are viewing on a phone get, get more oh, of a chance? Thank you. A I'm great. only thinking of people who are looking on smaller screens. They're not getting a chance to truly appreciate what you've done here. So, Yeah, as you can see here, it's, uh, it's brimming with detail. There's a whole lot of detail mm. because detail, as I said, as I uh, um, confessed, is my guilty pleasure. And yeah. uh, I put a lot of detail in here and I put a lot of detail in here that is not necessary for telling the story. Because the story basically is, it's war. There's a soldier with a, with a last rifle, they call it. Um, and he's basically storming against the phalanx of the orcs. And the orcs have a couple uh, uh, goblins in there. There's a special term for that. I'm sure somebody in the, in the chat knows the terms for the little goblins because they have a certain name in that universe. And this was based on a, uh, it was printed like this small. It was printed in like, I don't know. Oh, six by uh six by 12 centimeters so it's like a postcard hey, not well even. really like a notebook it's yes. a tiny notebook yeah tiny notebook um the drawing however was done on a3 paper so 11 by 17 inches uh paper was a pencil drawing you can see the pencil lines in there and uh leaving pencil lines is okay but it's it's not so good if you try to do something uh painterly then you want to paint over those lines because people do not have black outlines over their face in real yeah. life. Um, so um, this is compositionally a good picture. It has good storytelling in there. That is all okay. Um, yeah, but it is, it is basically very flat. If we look at it, um, this, is, this, is, this is tricky. Um, so the first, um, let, me, let me, yeah. So the first thing I did is make it black and white. And, and check out and go like, oh yeah, there is, there's a lot of things that are obscured here. I cannot see any distance. The soldier has detail and is gray and black and the orca has detail and is gray and black. And these goblins in the foreground have detail and they're gray and black. And there are some white spots down here and there's white here yeah. and there's some light here and there's some light here. And yeah, there's a whole lot of things going on. No, so man, it's, it's lovely. Yeah, um, it, is, it, is, it is good enough for... 15 years ago um for today i have some higher standards and i tried to push it a little bit more and i didn't take a lot of time on it i when i painted this it probably took me a week to paint this so now i sketched over it and it took me three hours to sketch over it and do something different with it wow. so the first thing i did is push back the background so let's make it the maximum size i can make this close this. by the way i came armed with my book klaus from the uh the Warhammer stuff, but came along with it. Very I nice. I just did a quick scan through the back to see if you're, if this one was in there, but I don't think it is. Yeah, that is. Uh, uh, it's, it's, there's a lot of, in this universe, in terms of storytelling opportunities, and oh, war, I mentioned, always is a great way to do something exciting. Um, but mm. we use this also for happy princesses, 
sitting on the grass in the sunshine and some shadow is being cast and some butterflies fly over and they have a higher, uh, they are a little sprinkled in like an effect. And then we create values and depth and storytelling with something absolutely yeah. horrible. Um, I am just the guy for the nitty gritty stuff. So that's what I'm talking yeah. about. You're stuck with me today. I like your, I like your, uh, in your, in terms of things moving in the air, I like the fact that you're including trace arounds in, uh, <laughs> in this particular, it looks like trace arounds in this particular one, although I guess that could be laser targeting. Oh, it's laser targeting. Yeah, it's, it's probably some laser race or something like this in there. Yeah. Um, but I, um, okay, that's a uh, that's background. I, I, let's, let's see, there's a, there's a little inferno here going on with my, with my layers. Um, yeah. So one of the things I did, I, I made it darker from the top. So we have more concentration on this here. It automatically um, transforms our picture to be more square. The upper part mm. doesn't matter as much anymore. And then I rendered in the orc. And what you, yeah. what you see here again is that I took away detail. And by detail, I mean value. I yeah. assigned all this a darker gray value and I didn't differentiate anymore between, oh, that's a, that's a metal thing here and there's a shoulder part here and the chain has highlights on it and there are some, like something is soon, uh, it's, it's a skin that is soon here. Uh, there's a chain around, there's some bobbed wire, there's some skulls here. Um, this is metal, this is a different sort of metal. There's something painted on here, the checkerboard stuff. So I was like, yeah, none of that is really necessary. We don't need that. Yeah. What we need essentially in this story is orc, nasty, big, with weapon against <laughs> tiny imperial guard about to die. That's yeah. the story. And uh, if I would drew this, if I if I drew this today, I would make a completely different composition that would focus much more on those two characters. These goblins in the foreground completely unnecessary. They have yeah. they've. I can allude to wall being around these characters just by having explosions, trace arounds in the sky, some silhouettes of other characters in the background shooting. That's that's perfectly enough. I don't need to draw in these secondary characters. But yeah. I didn't want to change so much about this painting and make it a new painting. I wanted to take the one we have and develop yeah. it further to show the process. I kind of like them being in it, though. I don't know. I, I like them being there. I, I'm a detail freak, so I like them too. But yeah. yeah, I did it today again, and I knew this thing was printed this tiny. Nope. No, true, true enough. Nope, they were not. So now I'm making the last rifle uh, pop out by putting a uh, a blur, uh, a white out effect. Some, some, there's some air and there's some smoke, and I'm putting a, a, a haze layer basically between that. Um, and now I'm working over, next part, I'm working over the soldier and to simplify him, to take away detail. There's so much detail in this, in this, in this character, like seams on his, on his clothes and stuff and so much detail here as well. And I, uh, I did my best to, to reduce this just on the essentials. Also very okay. happy, look at this here, the, um, the gas mask. Gas mask has glass here. So there's something reflecting in the glass. That's what I was thinking when I was painting it. Um, but these gas masks, like those are like on a curved layer, right? Around your face normally. Yep. So, so one of the glass panes in the eye is, uh, is pointing in one direction and the other one is pointing the other direction. So one is going to catch the light. The other one is not going to catch the light. Back then I didn't know that, or I didn't think about this. And now I did it and it reads so much better. It's so much more exciting all of a sudden, and the entire detail. Well, that's that's not that's, that's not that's not needed. So I can have lost edges in here as well. I don't need to differentiate it and put some strong too strong highlights in 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 some places. Just lost edges, and make yeah. a highlight when something really pops out. Now I'm darkening the foreground. That's the next step I did. Take all this stuff away and then maybe build, build, build on top again. Those were my flats that I created for this. So I can quickly uh, select what's going on there. And now I can actually use light to push stuff back as well. I cannot only obscure by making something dark. I can put light in front of it, a light source from something. And, and this might just be dust down here at the bottom. 
and uh, and push it push it back a little bit more. So I have a, a light area of very little gray area of very little detail. I have a an area with high detail and high contrast, a lot of black and white going on, a lot of detail going on here. And then I have another uh, area triangular here with less detail and less value changes in order to get all the attention to the middle of this, uh, of this beast. Put in some trace arounds again, maybe some more. Blur the background. That's a trick I did right there to, to give it a little bit more action. Yeah, it's got movement now, really, really. You can get a sense of the movement there. It's lovely. Um, so, so, so this happened. Um, then I brought back a little bit more of the checkerboard here. It's a, it's a, it's a tiny, uh, tiny thing, but I was like, ah, there should be some more attention on this thing because this is really pointing into the direction of the, um, of the, the light, the light source. And then I thought about like, oh, you know what? We need a little bit more grit. So I put in more particle effects there. Yeah, I, I spoke about the particle effects, the, 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 yeah. the equivalent to animation that I have as a person who draws still images. And um, let me see, did some more value corrections. Now I'm crunching it really hard, actually probably too hard. This is actually, I think uh, uh, the best way of, of leaving this, but this is what it was before. And look at what we have now. Mm. And this is by the difference in value knowledge and um, and having doing exercises and, and training and looking at what other people do. This doesn't come naturally. This is not um, simple knowledge. Uh, this is in depth. So yeah. um, uh, there's another round, but I was like, yeah, this, this takes too much attention away now, yeah. this thing. And yeah, this is what it was before. And then if we do this, for example, and if we if we have this, what we can do now is, as I mentioned, colors are just secondary because it's like, oh no, clouds, but now I've painted everything in, in, in black and gray here, um, but now the colors are lost and I have to paint all the colors again. That's so terrible. No, you don't have to because colors can just be overlaid. So I just go into Photoshop, go to the uppermost layer, change it from normal into color. Boom, it's in color. Exactly. And there's lots of people I know that paint that way. You know, they actually produce their work that way. They do everything in gray values first. And then they add, do exactly what you've just done just there, paint on in color mode. Yeah, and that's, 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 the, fun, that's the fun of it. You know, that, that's, that's how, this, uh, how, how this can work. And if you crunch it a lot there, you, you can end up with something like this, which is maybe a little wow. bit too intense from the, from the dark values in there. But there's more focus. I put in a couple lens flares. You see, like there's some more areas, um, layers in here. Um, but yeah, so it went from this being very cartoony looking all of a sudden to something more realistic looking and a little bit more intense. Um, and you see, there's a huge difference between those two versions. And for me, the difference was three hours. Uh, but that's not true because the difference is 15 hours in. Uh, is three hours of drawing and 15 years of experience. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, you can take the shortcut now. You can, you don't have to do it like me back in the day. And, uh, and uh, just, just, just learn from us here on, on Adobe and, uh, and transfer that and see if you can apply it to your, to your drawings. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sandrine saying she loved the depth of the field in, in that one, by the way, uh, when you added that there, it really did add something to it. A quick question, a couple of quick questions, actually. Um, are you quite conservative on what brushes you use? Um, do you, and, and I'm interested to find that. Do you, you know, do you have a set? I mean, I yeah, I have a, I have a, I have a few brushes that I, that I use all the time. One is, one is a sketcher brush. Um, I, yeah. It's basically um, very, um, yeah, very conservative, really. 90% is actually this one here because I can make yeah. complete darkness with it, but I can also like be super yeah. light. And, and then I can do this. So it's like, I can do everything with this. Um, yeah. And that's that's really, really highly practical to have something like this. Oil pestle is a little bit more for painterly style. And then I have, uh, we can use that in, in a second. I have a one for clouds. Oopsie, it doesn't work because I deleted the layer now, smart of me. I have one for clouds a little bit. So this is more like particles. And I have one for splatter, if you need different yeah. particles. And with these, yeah. oh, so these these really are the Kyle T. Webster ones. A lot of these, aren't they? I recognize the that might be. 
I have yeah. a collection from from all over the place. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, Photoshop luckily equips us with a whole lot of good brushes and too many, <laughs> <laughs> too many. Um, too many. Uh, but the um, later on, you need more brushes if you want to be faster and more efficient. Like if you need to uh, paint uh, grass, for example, you don't want to go like right, but you need that yeah. faster. Um, as a storyboard artist, you can do with two brushes. That's fine. And the entire, when, the difference between a great painting and a good painting is the knowledge. It's not the brushes. Yeah. And when Kyle watches this later on uh, and says, what do you mean too many? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say, I'm sorry, Kyle, but you know, keep making them, but there's just so many. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot going on. So um, actually last time we, you and I spoke, uh, we still have half yeah. an hour, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So last time we spoke, and uh, I encourage everybody to go back uh, on Behance um, or online to to watch our last one about crowds, um, where I sketched out this this drawing, and we didn't have a lot of time, and there were a lot of uh, thing, ground to cover. So um, I I just took the time at home now and prepared for this for this session and refined it a little bit more, and 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 gave it more quality and made a nice layer, layer structure. That is more transparent, so we actually get to dabble in it a little bit quicker. So I would like to take this to a more of a finished state right now. Let's see how far I get. I would say. Um, I have I have already, as you can see, alluded to it a little bit con con conceptually um, that I have a foreground that is dark, I have a middle ground that is medium in value, and I have a background that is lighter. I also have different types of detail in here. I have quality of detail, which is the faces. And I have detailed quantity in the background, which is the wall. It's just a whole lot of little lines uh, easily created and put some posters on the wall as well. Um, and I have two layers for every character. This is, I call him righty because he's on the right. Um, and he has a... <laughs> He has a he has a dark layer and behind him he has a flat created yeah. for the character. So it's very comic book like coloring that I'm doing right here now. But I'm indeed trying to use all the, the smart things we talked about when we create values in this too. And then we have lefty on the left here, down here. And uh, so it's some sleazy looking guy defending himself against humans, normal people turned into monsters. They have giant ginormous teeth. Um, and uh, yeah, one is coming actually from the back and he hasn't even seen seen that character yet. So uh, maybe we can even take that, that person out. Let me see, wall texture from behind here. This is from behind. There's another character there. Um, so I can approach this now and go like, okay, let's let's see how I do how I do values in, in, in this image. And yeah, well if I if I have to be like super fast about this and 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 don't um, if I wanna how do I say this um, go on it, go on it with, with mauling it with a hammer <laughs> and trying to bring focus in this piece. It's like super easy because I'm like, oh yeah, sure. He's, um, he's, let me open another layer up here to talk about this stuff at the top. And I'll be like, yeah, he's firing his gun, right? Boom. And now I have yeah. the white spot in the dark area and that's focus and it's super good. Perfect. We have to focus. The deed is done. Nothing I can do down here with other values will bring the attention away from this spot because this is also very, very strong. It would be different indeed if I did something different. If I, if I did this here, if I did, if I did a gradient because gradients are always very unobtrusive. Um, yeah, that's nice. Doesn't really look like um, lighting coming from the shot of a gun. Um, yeah. But if I do this, uh, a muzzle flash of a gun is the brightest thing. It's like a flashlight. So I automatically have to focus here. There's there's no more nuance I can actually bring to the piece really because it's like mauling it with a hammer um, and we don't want that. So I'm doing away with this. So we see he shot his last um, bullet here. The gun is now empty and it's like a, a fraction of a second behind, uh, sorry, after he has made the shot. That's, that's what I'm going with for the storytelling here. Yeah. That means we can now go in and go like, yes, we can now create a different focus point. It doesn't have to be the muscle flesh. Amazing, let's do this. 
So I'm going into the background. Uh, the background is a is a gray here. Um, so I can now see where do I put the background. Do I make this a low key scene or a high key scene? Well, I wanna I wanna make it more low key. So in general, with the gray tones, that's already uh, well established here. Um, I have put in some some background here, but those should be very very far in the back, not very um, prominent in there. Yeah. But I imagine that in this in this scene here, um, there are there are a couple lamps. Street lamps are maybe turned on, so so they yeah. give us some some light. Okay. Uh, yeah. The posters I can remove right now, so it's 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 a little bit lighter. So I'm saying like, yeah, you know what? There's some light from street lamps being cast on the on the walls. So um, I'm I'm making this part lighter. And there's a part behind him here that is very dark, um, that is very it's unrendered, and there's not a lot of light um, popping into this into this place. So I can go in there, and because I made nice selection and everything, I can go super fast. Create darkness. You don't. You don't have a book yet, do you? Of, of, of the, are you going to pass on your knowledge in a written form at some point? Is that something you plan for? I, I, I was thinking about it. I was thinking about either doing a series in Imagine FX magazine and later on turning it into book because uh, because yeah. storytelling is interesting for a lot of people. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I, mean, I don't know if you're aware of them. There are some books by um, Marcos Natio uh, Mestre. Mestre. Oh, you do know them. Oh yeah, uh, frame, frame, <laughs> ink, framed ink, ink, and I framed have... ink too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have to, I still have to get framed ink too. Um, yeah, and they are, they are great. They are amazing. And uh, however, like the the uh, everybody learns differently. Let's put it that way. And uh, so there's always room for more good and inspirational books about about art. People have different styles, and maybe for a lot of people, like um, Marcos Mestres, style resonates more mm -hmm. than my stuff. But my stuff might also be interesting. Um, I think yours would be amazing. Thank you. Let's. I, let's, I let's... really look forward to that. So I'm just putting a cast shadow in here um, and making this a little bit darker as well. And and we see we get more attention now. Why did we get more attention? Because we have a we have put in we have a gray system here. We have now gray here. We have this part is now gray, and the other part is 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 white. These parts, these two parts, are white or lighter. Let's put it that way. Um, so where is my uh, background? Here we go in the background. Boom! Here we go. So we're already making this pop, and that is that is that is really cool. We don't have to go all black. I don't need to do this. Let's keep this yeah. for later for punching it a little bit more. Let's keep yeah. the white, the, the, the perfect white for later for punching it a little bit more. And just start with the value system here. So I know there's some, some handles here, some railing from, from the staircase, and I can easily go in here and render this a little bit. Doesn't need to be too much. Um, mm -hmm. I can imagine that he's maybe, there's another light from the front here. So he might even create a, there might be even a shadow here. Of his of his own own shape that he puts puts down there is that realistic? Uh, I don't know. I'm not a photoreal painter, um, but I know that in terms of storytelling, it would be interesting to have to have that here to 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 have an echo of that of that shape um, be be displayed. So we see his his nose and his and his hair there. Maybe so might be interesting. Um, um, now I can I can go in eternally and uh, and render uh, light and shadow on every single brick here, and that will take us a whole long time to do this. I can always make a little shadow here, um, and uh, I, I I shouldn't be doing this because it's just too long. If I uh, hit boom, Stuart's asking how many uh, versions get created for approval. How many it, do you? In storyboarding, you mean? Um, yeah. It really depends. These are keyframe sketches. Um, so hopefully the composition has been approved before, like the first sketch that I showed you guys here. Um, like this one at this stage, it gets approved. Like, okay, paint this as a keyframe, and then we we just have to play with values and this type of stuff. And right, develop. 
Yeah. Yeah. And if it's a real keyframe, like the, the, the big shots at Marvel Paint with the photo real imagery and 3D sh tossed in there, a little bit of blender or something with, with real lighting um, system, uh, yeah, then it gets even, even trickier. But normally for pre production work, which is what I'm doing, uh, a rough version will suffice. Yeah. Now, there's appetite for your book, by the way. <laughs> Okay, that's a, it's inspiring to hear that. Very good. People are already discussing the fact they might have to buy a new bookcase at this rate. So, you know, it's, uh... I think it's going to be, um, yeah, it's I actually, I, I thought about it. The, the, the title is very much, you want to hear the title? Um, yeah, go. Uh, so it. the title would be the, the Dynamics of Visual Narration. It sounds very academic. Sounds, it does sound very academic. Yeah, I like uh, it. Because it, it is academic. Yeah, but the entire book will probably much more like, oh, look at this, what I drew here. Maybe you can do that too. May hey, this secret I used in this drawing, maybe you can use that. So maybe the dynamics uh, could be could be perhaps the alternative title. Sometimes you have books that have a snappier uh, title. Oh, and yeah. They have an alternative to or, you know, like or the dynamics of blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, well, I will probably should go with like power lines. The dynamics of visual yeah painting. or yeah or yeah maybe the chat can come i'm up sure you'll work something out can the chat maybe develop something they maybe can actually visual narration uh yeah, very good. yeah something that's easier to ask for in a bookstore that's a that's a very good point <laughs> yeah yeah visual yeah. narration. do you have the uh, actually doesn't matter <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's a. Uh, I should actually do this. I mean, just go to visualnarration.com and see where you where you end up, right? Yeah, there you go. Right. Maybe maybe yeah. you end up on my website. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I like I like this title of this particular uh, this particular stream. Lighting up stories. I think right. that's. Um, yeah, that's that's a good one, but it's not um, it's not something that that pertains to everything that I draw because I'm I'm a lot True. about dynamic uh, figure drawing and, and and composition, and it doesn't necessarily have to do with light. Um, oh, that sounds more like a that sounds more like a series to me, Klaus. Uh, Don't okay. put all your eggs in one basket. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so so we have some 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 rough lighting set up now for for the background, which is great. We should always start from the back, like the big concept artist painters. Like uh, if you look, Raphael Lacoste, who's the franchise franchise art director for Assassin's Creed, he always starts with the sky, sky color yeah. and sky value determine the entire picture for him. Um, so he always starts with the back plane, then moves forward and goes from rough shapes like we do right now into very painterly stuff. Um, so if you can't get Rafael Lacoste on here, like you should try that. He's a busy man, though. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, oh, well, that's down to Emma to sort that out. Yeah. I quite like Orlando Aracena on here, but as well, as you know, not as a storyboard artist, this is an illustrator thing. Do you know Orlando Aracena? Uh, no, I don't know that person. No. He's a fantastic illustrator, Mexican. F fantastic. Yeah. That'd be another problem. We are all over the place, Hundred. right? Which is which is so cool. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm now rendering out this character. Why do I do this next? Why don't I do the foreground character? Because um, you want to have the most quality rendering in the, in the point of focus. And I want my focus on this guy. I don't want it on the shot killing this monster guy. I want the focus on this character. So my detail quality has to go there as well. And I have to be aware that I'm, I will be using, this is a suit dude, I call the thing. And I'm locking the layer now so I can just draw like crazy inside and never draw over the lines. So I did all the, the complicated work before. So what I want to do is I want to give him a shiny jacket, not a white jacket. That's too strong, but a light jacket. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm making him pop against, um, against the gray background and, and all that stuff. So... The shot has already run out. Light is coming from the top. I will introduce more light later on to, to even um, be able to uh, explain why there will be uh, light on here. Careful with this, what I've just done now. Like a lot of artists do this here, for example. Like, oh yeah, let's give him a ring light, a rim light. Look how nice he pops out with the rim light. That is so cool. Yeah, great. That is great. That is cool. Doesn't make any sense. Why no. not? 
because uh, rim lights mean that the light source is behind the character you're illustrating. And when I say behind, yeah. I mean from the character. If you want a ring light on me, you have to put a light behind me at the door yeah, yeah. somewhere, and then a ring light will pop out. If there's a light here on the side of my face, um, it will just light up the side of my face. There will not be this little line crisply separating it. So this is yeah. just not possible. I cannot do it. In comic books, it's sometimes done because it pops more and it's simple and you need to be fast. And comic books are all about popping because they're pop culture. Um, yep. So we can there do you this. Go. Um, we do this, we can do this, but we don't want to overdo it. And that's that's the important message I have. Don't don't overdo the rim lights um, and, and make this simple. And now I can go in like, you know what? There's too much texture in this brush here. Why not use the, the more oil pastel -y one? And, uh, and and have it a little bit less uh, less flashy. This guy actually could have, for example, a white shirt. So I have something in there that is that is really that is really popping out. I have one one part of that really pop out a bit more. Uh, Sandrine is asking uh, in regards to the storyboard. Are the light sources always set up prior to the sketches by the director or production team, or or do you, are you fairly free to interpret that? As a storyboard artist, you're, you're fairly free to, free to do this normally. Yeah. Um, if you're a keyframe illustrator, then they will have more uh, bespoke um, factors in there. Yeah. And they will tell you, yeah, we have a night scene or we have a morning scene and the sun is coming from the south and that's why it's coming through these windows. And then they will tell you all the things you need to know before. As a storyboarder, you have a blank slate often, and you can have a tremendous impact on the production because you inspire people in ways. Because once they see it, they go like, yeah, looks about right. Yeah, I'll just go with it. You know, it was approved, so I'll go with it. And uh, the impact can be remarkable, even on storytelling, even on writing. There might be rewrites just after doing the storyboards. The narrative department has to go in and do a rewrite because, like, oh, yeah, the scene works much better if if this happens this way. And they then they go in and go like, yeah, we can even, even make the dialogue match what is, what is happening there in, uh, in, the, in the animatic of the storyboard. And that's really cool if you see that. But it's, I have a whole section in my library that is just about storyboarding. Yeah, there's some gorgeous books and there's some new ones yeah. coming out as well. Yeah. There's a, there's a new I got one. All of, the, all of the Star Wars ones recently. They're really good. Very insightful. Yeah. Yeah, I hear they are awesome. There's a new one by uh, Sylvain Dupré. I, I hope Dupré's TZ. Okay. Um, okay. He's an artist. He worked on, on, on huge movies. Um, yeah. And there's a new one coming out from him. So it's, yeah, I'm getting inspired. I think I have that. By colleagues a lot. Yeah. Um, hmm. That is, that is just so good if you work in an industry or a part of the industry where you're like, oh my God, the other people inspire me to, to be better. And you see what they're doing and you just go like, oh my God, please lead the way. Go on like this. I'm on your six. Maybe I'll do this in five or 10 years, what you're doing today. And uh, it's, it's nice if you can think like this and don't think about, oh my God, their competition, they will steal my job away. They will not. They cannot because yeah. jobs are given away by companies. They're not stolen by people. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you can, you can be better at, as an, than another person and that person gets the job. Um, but um, that's, that's, that doesn't mean that your art is worse. It means you don't have the network yet to have the right people look at your art. And as a commercial illustrator, it's important to, to have this network and um, you have to, to work on that as much as you have to work on your craft. So, um, but the main thing is just keep doing it, right? That's the, absolutely. that's the thing. Absolutely, keep doing it. And if, 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 if people enjoy seeing me draw here and, and creating something, and if you get inspired by uh, Tony and me shooting the breeze here and, and talking about uh, uh, the value structures and the storytelling and all this and about storyboards and books about this. If you get inspired to pick up the pencil, we've done our work. That's, you will find out how values work on your own. Yeah. Well, everybody here is really enjoying us. Nobody uh, has objected here to a bit of chiaroscuro uh, work going on here, Klaus, at all. So, you know, the line that never was and all that stuff. So.
Oh yeah, the trail score. Yeah, we haven't talked about this. This is another yeah. thing that is that is really cool. And I will maybe I can try to work this in here in the background a little bit. Wouldn't yeah. that be cool? That would be very good. What are we on time? We've got about 10 minutes now. So oh my God, 10 minutes, that's like nothing. It's like literally nothing. So I have to like wrap this up really quickly. Okay. So I'm, I'm taking some lighter colors here. Uh, highlight the, the lips here a little bit and the nose gets, gets a little highlight too. You put a little bit bling in there. It's a little bit, the ear sticks out, so it gets a highlight as well. And uh, it's so good that you gave me this, this countdown because that's, that's storyboard mode now. That's like 10 minutes, make it work. Whatever, whatever you created goes to the directors. And then you start sweating and you go like, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't be rendering this ear of this person in the foreground that is not important at all. Um, so we will, we will do it like this. And talking about Cheroscuro, yeah. that means basically we have lost edges. Um, we have parts of the illustration that just get lost in this, um, in this, in this part of the painting, because it's 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 just dark. And and the shadow is uh, we have a cast shadow here from from his upper body on on his own arm, and then the the arm pops out again, and we have the the sleeve comes out again here as well. So we have the storytelling, how how light and bright his sleeve is as against his. Um, oh, I did put the little, what do you call this? Little towel thing. Oh, handkerchief. Handkerchief, yeah. Handkerchief. I want to put this in here as well. Um, so we can put some reflections here because this guy is sweating. He's, he's about to get eaten alive. Yep. Um, so we're seeing now that Churoscuro is not really working here. He's not fading perfectly into the background. Why is that the case? The case is because we have strong outlines. This is still an outline drawing. This is not a painting. And that gets, gets a bit trickier in, in this thing. So what we have to do is create a layer mask and, and slowly paint away parts of that. It's a little there we go. And now we see that that uh, there's still some some whiteness going on there, and we want to take this away. So if we make this smaller, we can see how he's like melting into the background, and then we have this chiaroscuro effect. There's another one. Uh, I prepared this actually, but I didn't get around to talking about it. Um, ah. There is a, and you can find this on my Instagram as well at Storyboard Clouds. You can find. I think this Batman yes. drawing. If not, I'm going to put it up there soon. I think it was there. It's there, yeah. And this is uh, this is the chiaroscuro effect here, right? Where the arm that is that is drawn in here uh, is is disappearing. I don't need this. I also also I have these three things here, and I have one here. Why? Because the second one and the third one will not be visible anymore. And I have a cast shadow that goes into the blackness of his of his suit. So I'm marrying um, local value. This is a local value. This is a black bat on his chest. But this is the cast shadow on a on a gray sweater that he's wearing, um, so I'm, I'm I'm unifying this and making the picture more simple and thereby creating interesting shapes. I don't need to see how the leg goes into his body. I don't need to see that. Um, the knowledge about the world will make it happen for me, and uh, that's a really cool lecture. I can even do it with a background. I have a, I have a lamp post in there, and it's it doesn't have. It has lost edges and it has this chiaroscuro effect. And because I have other lampposts in the background, it reads. We know what it is. Yeah. We know how deep, how, how depth works in this, in this thing. Um, I think I will be needing more time with this, with this, with this thing. Uh, but oh, well, we'll just have to have you back again. That would be that, how terrible. <laughs> I will, that will be horrible. Yes, again, with yeah. you might be, my, my, maybe even I, my goodness. Um, but I can... Um, I can now go in and, and uh, for example, use some like this. This bullet here is really cool. I might. Uh, I don't have a. I don't have a flat actually for the bullet. Un unfortunately, I could. I could use that and create it right now. Boom! Here we have the flat for the bullet. I'm locking the layer again, and I might want to have this. This thing. I want to have this bling out. I want to have attention on this on this bullet here, and I want to have attention on his gun. So so I'm putting some really almost white highlights. This is not fully white, as you can see. 
on on the gun because it's it's metal, so it will will get there catch the reflection, right? That's his cool gun that he has, maybe a golden gun or whatever. Um, and just put a little bit of, of attention here. And now I want to bring in and and uh, create some lighting effects, like really basically cheap lighting, tricky lighting, using white, using 40% white. I'm saying there's this light coming from up here. And all of a sudden, everything makes a little bit more sense. Um, and we have the light come up here. I can even have a light spill over here because there's light coming from, from the top. And, and it's, it, it now has more continuity, but there's a lot of action around this part here. There's a lot of um, a wall. And what I did back then uh, when I was playing this thing, I was like, let's put a poster there. And I can actually do this and use this poster, for example, and, and uh, go in for the poster here, maybe make the poster dark as well. You know, there's, uh, there's some writing on it or something. Oopsie, I didn't lock the layer. Let's see if it works with, with this. And this is, this is, oopsie, I locked the wrong one. Da -da 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 -da. This is the one I wanted to, to have. And let's see what happens now if I put in some gray in here in the background. And now the, the bullet automatically like pops out more and the gun pops out more as well. Um, in, in, in this system. And now my question is like, do I do this or don't I do this? What, what is the best way of, of, of making this happen? Because now I can go in here and um, because I have a darker back against this bullet, I can do the bling again. Right? So I, I can, go. and now I have a bling on the bullet. And now what I'm realizing is, you know what? This, this particle effect that I have there um, is, is really kind of cool. It's, um, can, I can actually blur it a little bit as well. So it's flying out here. I can, I can paint in a little bit of smoke from, from the gun. So that's yeah. kind of cool, but it's not really doing enough for me yet. I need more particles. And what particles could I inject in this, in this, into this, into this graphic system? One particle liquid. <laughs> liquid is good, and I'll come to that in a second. Yeah. Always good is like leaves. You know, oopsie, now there's nothing happening. I could put a leaf in there and have some leaves flying here. That that might be nice, but it's in a city, so might be some leaves. But he just shot a guy, so I can do liquids in there. And now comes the time for my splatter brush. One more, bam. Have to be really conservative with that stuff. I have to erase here in the foreground. We don't we don't see that. That was too strong. Taking taking too much here. So this is really cool. So this is like this has a tension here because I put detail uh, qual quantity in here, not detail quality. This is just a I didn't paint a gun or detail. I just had these these the splatter effect sprinkled in here. And now we have a competition. We have a competition between the particle effects and the detail created by the splatter with the detail quantity created by the wall in the background. So what I can do, sneaky as I am now, I can go in to the layer that has, that has the wall texture in there, uh, create a layer mask and indeed change the right brush again, otherwise I'll be screwed because we, we don't really we don't really need wall here. We we took a, should take away this detail. It's not necessary. There's light coming from the top too, so it's not necessary. So I, I'm taking away now the wall that I painted before. Um, the first part, and I'm wrapping up today really soon. Um, the, the first part we do as illustrators when we when we start learning you as I do um, is we try to learn how to draw everything. And then we're yeah. really happy that we can draw everything. So we actually put everything we know into the drawing. If yeah. we know that a building has curtains, we will draw little curtains here in the background of that, uh, of that wall of that, of that uh, building. Um, later on, we know, we, we realize putting detail everywhere is not good. Because yeah. detail creates focus and detail distractions. Detail to come back from the, from the very first lesson we had today, detail creates value. 
And values are always uh, the, the central element of this changing battlefield of illustration, of differentiation and creating focus. And the more we know about this and the more we try out that stuff, like I'm trying out stuff here, I didn't know how it would work. I didn't know if it would be perfect. Um, but finding solutions for that is really the interesting part of creating artwork. And uh, if I can inspire you to do that and try that out, especially with Photoshop and layers and the cool brushes that we have, um, so easy and you can always do control z um and go back um which is know? the thing that you couldn't do back in the day but there you are <laughs> yeah so. back then it was like airbrush Pfft. oh no yeah, yeah. true and while i was transitioning anecdote while i was transitioning from real media from uh pen and ink and ink wash technique drawing for shadowrun and other games back in the day for publication of black and white um and i was transitioning to to Photoshop, I was in between doing something going back. And then I'd be like drawing and then I'd be like, okay, let's, let's put in some rain. And I just put in some white gel marker, you know, just put in some rain. And then I noticed, no, no, I want the rain in a different angle. I don't want it straight down. I want it slightly angled, but then it was already there and I couldn't go back anymore. Yeah, that was, um, that yeah, was an opening. Very one. different. That's interesting. <laughs> but I think this yeah. works. Um, it's not as, as powerful as, as what we have created here, but this took much more time, much more detail. And uh, this, I think, still uh, is a nice enough thing to show the director. And we don't need any details on the other characters uh, right now, right there. Maybe I'll yeah. finish this up uh, after this. Next session. time. It would have to be next time because they're actually, I can't believe it's flown past this 90 minutes. Absolutely flown past. I know that you've inspired people to. Uh, to, to follow along with these techniques because they're saying so in the chat. And uh, as a, again, people would be very, very receptive uh, to you producing a book of this content. And I think you should, you could, you could treat composition and lighting and all different. Don't try and put it all into make, 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 make a few smaller ones, but there we yeah, that, Plastic. That might, be a thing. might be a thing. Thanks for the inspiration, Chad. That's really, it's really kind of you. And uh, thank you for the inspiration. It was amazing, really good. So really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Everybody here has enjoyed it. Uh, I think we have a stream on Friday, but I'd just like to remind everybody uh, that Adobe is taking two weeks off of streams uh, next week and the week after so that Tim can finally have a break. He's only allowed two weeks to go outside uh, in the year. <laughs> Uh, that's it. So he gets his two weeks now. So he'll get some color back again. Uh, just that, and you know, loads of vitamins that he needs. Actually, so that that's good. Um, <laughs> but don't forget that you can also go ahead and join our disc if you want to carry on. Share. Of course, that will continue on throughout that period and do that. And when we can look forward to when we see Klaus next, which will be hopefully not too far away. So thanks ever so much again, Klaus, for joining us. Thank really you so great much. you're an amazing host always fun with you and yeah i'd love to come back and talk some more about storytelling and drawing it's it's i love awesome doing. me too very much all right thanks everybody take care enjoy the rest of your wednesday happy week and all that stuff care now bye bye